Hello, everyone. My name is Noura. I graduated with a BA in psychology, so to a lot of you, this means that I can read minds. I'm afraid I'm going to be a bad killer and to disappoint you, but no, I cannot read minds. A lot of people think that we can, but we really humanely cannot do that. Other than my demographics, there is nothing very interesting about me. I went to school, I graduated, and I'm currently working. In fact, there is one thing that is slightly interesting about me, which is that I volunteer in the Lebanese National Suicide Hotline. Some might be surprised to learn about this hotline. Well, yes, we do have one in Lebanon. The number is 1564. We operate seven days a week from 12 till 2 a.m. When I first started volunteering there, I used to get all sorts of questions like, do people actually call? Or do they even have problems? Or they can't be serious, can they? Well, my face used to answer these questions before my mouth even did. Yes, people do need to call the hotline when they're feeling down, distressed, or even suicidal. And yes, people do need to reach out, even if it was to an absolute stranger. So, let me take you with me through part of my day. When the phone rings, you can't really expect how the phone call will start. It can be someone who's crying and sobbing and barely even taking a breath. Or it can be someone who's saying hi with that fragile little crack in their voice, making one of the shortest words the longest. And then the story begins. I usually ask them, how are they doing? A lot answer using the word fine. Some answer using the word alhamdulillah, which is common in Lebanon for good. And you can detect that even though they said that they were fine, that they really aren't. Each story is different, and each is seen from a different angle. A caller once told me, life is just like an event, and I want to exit that event. That statement really struck me hard. And then he asked me, why can't I just exit? A huge bulk of my work is to listen, to thoroughly listen, and to empathetically react with what the caller is saying. I need to understand where are they coming from and what's going on inside of their heads in order for me to make sense out of it. It is so important for them to let out everything that has been bottled inside of them, especially when it has been there for so long. When our motto is, الحكي بتوّل العمر, or talking saves lives. I once talked to someone who hasn't talked to anyone for 10 whole days. It was my first call. I was really caught off guard and the conversation actually felt very dull at first. So he told me that he likes languages, especially German. So I told him, ich liebe dich, which translates into, I love you. And that was the first thing that popped in my mind when he said German. So he laughed, and we connected right there at that statement that none of us even expected. You see, reacting to these situations can be extremely challenging. But I figured out keys for successful communication in this case. Share. Share represents the different methods I've been using throughout my journey with the suicide hotline. And I believe that these simple tools can be extremely useful to anyone dealing with one of the toughest conversations that we can ever have. So first, being spontaneous and using humor. Sometimes there is no right thing to say. You just say what's on your heart and what's on your mind. We tend to be under the impression that we have to be serious and that we cannot joke on such occasions. But really, joking can lighten up the mood of the caller. I once talked to someone who was extremely suicidal. She kept on repeating, I want to die, I want to die, I want to die. So I asked her, have you watched Prison Break before? So she said, sobbingly, no, I haven't. 
I told her, fine. Promise me not to kill yourself before watching Prison Break. So she said sobbingly again, but I can't, it's five seasons, it's way too long. <laughs> so we both laughed and moved on to see what's stopping her from watching series and just enjoying life. We don't have to be serious at all times and to interrogate the person who is obviously not up for a detective role play. You cracking a joke from now and then will make them feel like they're talking to a friend rather than to a machine. Plus, we're Lebanese. Humor is the to go to place when things really start reaching their peak. It's also extremely necessary to show appreciation. Now, I use several terms when I'm on a call. One of the magical terms that I use is telling someone that I understand what you're going through is hard and that you are bearing so much. That statement is magic. It's music to people's ears. When you recognize them, when you recognize their efforts and their struggles, you are recognizing them as a whole. You're appreciating their constant fights with the world and their struggle to stay alive. Some tell me that all they want is to be at peace and to relax and not have to fight anymore. And you know what? It really breaks my heart knowing that they have to wake up every single day and to fight. But I have to encourage them. I have to keep them going. Because I know that after all these fights are over, the sunlight will be back again. And they will see that what they have been fighting for is finally over. I once talked to someone who wasn't able to see hope in life anymore. So I asked her if she understands Japanese. She calmly said no. I asked her, does this make it any less of a language if you don't understand it? She also calmly said no. I told her that this is the exact same situation with hope, that sometimes we don't see it, we don't even understand it. But that doesn't mean that it's not there, because it is. It really, really is. Third, reassurance. Sometimes, all what the caller wants is reassurance, telling them that things will be OK at one point in time, that all those doors that have been slamming shut in their faces will slowly start opening again. And at some point, it's enough to just listen. I remember a call I spent 40 minutes with. And before I hung up, the caller told me that I'm amazing and that I saved his life. For 40 minutes, to be exact, I barely even said a word. I barely even said two words. I told him, I understand you, or bifhamak, from time to time. These two words were enough to keep him going, knowing that there is someone out there in this world, behind the phone, who understands what he's going through. And I usually tend to tell the callers that they're actually very, very brave, that they have the easy option to end their lives and to exit the event. But they decide on staying. And honestly, that's all that matters right now. Finally, E for empathy. A caller once told me this, and it really shook every ounce of empathy I have in my heart. He told me, I'm falling and I'm falling and I'm falling, and every time, I have to pick myself up. He actually said it in Arabic. He said, I'm بتكسر, I'm بتكسر, I'm بتكسر, وكل مرة أنا بدي لمحالي. The sadness in his voice made me realize how lonely it can get and how exhausting it is to always have to pick yourself up. To be honest, it doesn't require you to be a volunteer in a hotline or to travel to Nepal or to even have a BA in psychology for you to understand what are people going through. All you need to have is an open heart, an ear to end, and a kind word to give. Because when that caller told me that he was falling apart, I felt that. 
And I know that you can feel that right now because each and every one of us has been through a situation where all we wanted was for someone to tell us they understand what we're going through or maybe tell us nothing but make us feel like we are not falling apart alone. At the end of the call, we usually ask the callers how did they feel at the beginning and at the end of the call on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being the most distressed. What's funny is that a lot of callers say that they were a 10 or a 100 and that they become a 1 or maybe a 3. A caller once told me, that he took every single ounce that has been bottled inside of him and he just poured it outside. And that made him feel like he was a one. Now I know that this might defy the rules of math, but that's the beauty of the magical words that I told you about. The words that can put each of us at ease, that save events, and add hope. Now, of course, all of these tools can be extremely helpful. But there's no magical recipe. Not everything is la vie en rose. I remember a caller I spent two hours with, doing everything by the book. But at the end of the call, she still felt like she was a 10. So I understand that comforting someone can be really hard. And I can imagine how tough this is on you. But if there is one message that I would like you to take from this talk, it's the following. There is always something that we can try and do. Always try to make it a point to share. Thank you.